Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. First of all, thank you to everyone. When I first started this, I didn't really think I'd have one subscriber. Now we're up to almost 8,500. And when we hit that 10,000 mark, we're going to give away a USG3 and a US Switch 860 watt. So watch for those uh, details as we get closer to 10,000 and how we're going to determine who the winner is. Also, mark it on your calendar. Uh, May 29th, there's going to be a live stream. May 29th, mark it on there. There'll be more details on that. Uh, I was going to do a bit of a longer video tonight, a longer configuration video, but my, my throat, my voice, a uh, little tender with all the weather changes and everything. I know I'm being, I'm being, you know, overly cautious. And I have to talk a lot during the day, but, uh, so we're going to, we are going to address some configuration tonight and something that keeps coming up over and over and over again. And that is, do you have to have a static IP on your USG or your edge router to be able to do things like remote access to it? Uh, the answer is no, you can use dynamic DNS for that. So let's hop into that. I am over, and this video is going to be specifically to cover Google dynamic DNS. If you don't have a domain through Google, give it a whirl. It's 12 bucks a year. It comes with uh, domain privacy. It's fantastic. I am not affiliated with them. I am not an affiliate. I just use it. You can see here. And I happen to own ubiquityeverywhere.com. So that is the domain that we are going to use to create a dynamic DNS. So we're going to go over here to the DNS settings and that's going to come up and then we're going to come down here and um, you can see I've got one called home so we'll go ahead and delete that and under the synthetic records we are going to add a dynamic DNS and we're going to call this lab.ubiquityeverywhere.com it's going to create that and if we expand the dynamic DNS we're going to see this username and password and you want to click view credentials let's go ahead and leave this here and this video is going to cover the USG we're going to look at it in both uh, Unify Beta and in the Unify um, Stable Release that's out. So first let's hop over to the Stable Release. We've just logged in. You can see we've got our USG. Now I wanted to show you this because it, it's important. Um, the first thing that we're always going to do when we log into our Cloud Key is we're going to go in here and we're going to go into Settings and Maintenance and it looks like there is a new version available and this is non-beta this appears to be what is out there so we're gonna go ahead and download a backup and we are gonna go ahead and apply this update I'm gonna pause it while the update goes and uh, we'll come back when uh, 5.4.15 is loaded so we will be right back Okay, so that took uh, five minutes or less, and you can see that our screen is refreshed, and we are actually on 5.4.15 now, and it did keep our SSL certificate, so that's good. Uh, that, you know, sometimes uh, it's a crapshoot when you modify the operating system on devices, whether that's going to uh, happen or not. So now we're on the stable release of 5.4.15. I know there's a 5.4.16 that's out there, and it'll probably hit the the repo here uh, in the next uh, couple weeks so we'll be doing that again um, you can you know go out and see uh, the 5.4.15 release notes you know I know they tidied up a few things so first of all uh, before we actually do the configuration of the domain I want to show you the difference so this is 5.4.15 which is the stable release that you should be running in production unless you like to live dangerously um, and so the way we're going to configure the USG here for dynamic DNS is we're actually going to click on the USG. We're going to go to configuration and then there's a, this dynamic uh, DNS section. Now if you're running the beta controller, you're actually going to go into settings. And I have to update my beta. I think there's a, uh, there's a new version of the beta controller out. I tend to run a little bit behind, do a little bit of different testing. Uh, but you don't actually do it on the USG itself in the beta version. You do it under settings and then services, and there's this uh, dynamic DNS that's in here. So uh, you can you know follow these instructions, and it should work no matter which version you're on. You just have to remember which place you're 
uh, you're at. We are going to concentrate on the 5.4.15 in this video, so I'm going to close that out. So we've got our USG, which right now is called that USG, and uh, we're going to go ahead and click on that again, and we're going to go to configuration, and then we're going to go to dynamic DNS. No dynamic DNS has been configured, so what we're going to do is we're going to click create. Now, Google Dynamic DNS uses or can use the Dyn DNS protocol. So what we're going to do is we're going to select Dyn DNS from the drop down for the host name. We set up, I believe it was lab.ubiquityeverywhere.com. So lab.ubiquityeverywhere.com. We're going to go back over and we're going to get our username and our password. So we're going to get our credentials. And be careful if you're copying and pasting that you don't get extra blank characters in there because that could throw a, a monkey wrench in this. Okay, now server. This is where you're not going to point to Dyne DNS, but you're going to point to Google. So we're going to put in domains.google.com. And we're going to hit apply. And you're going to see that our USG is immediately going to go into provisioning. And you know how impatient I get. i got to click, 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 click. Still provisioning. Okay, so we are provisioned at this point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see if our information is updated. So I'm just going to click refresh over here at Google. And under synthetic records and then our lab.ubiquity everywhere, you can see that it says that our IP address is 192.168.66.208. So you can see that it is working. Now obviously you're not seeing a real IP here because this is inside my lab. It's doing a double NAT. So that's another thing that you need to remember is that a lot of these services you need to have a live IP. Now does it have to be static? No, but it should be a live routable IP. Uh, I've even seen where some people are able to get the DMZ feature to work uh, behind, but uh, you're really rolling the dice. You're better off if you can do it to have uh, a, you know a live routable IP. But this this right here will show you that it's working. We can even go ahead and we'll open up a command prompt and we'll do an NS lookup lab.ubiquityeverywhere.com and we'll go out to that 4.2.2.2 and you can see that it is telling us that it is 192.168.68.6.208 so um, that's it for now uh, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share please follow me on twitter and instagram please use my amazon affiliate links that are down there if you want to be notified when i release a new video click the little bell that's floating around down there please use all those affiliate links uh, come back for the next video and if you've got any suggestions make sure you leave those in the comments thanks again